everybody, and welcome back to the Mad Max podcast. I'm here with Sasha, and we're going to be talking about Ray Fisher and what's going on with DC and Joss Whedon. Um, oh, Raymond. Yeah. Nice to see you again. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming on. So Sasha, um, as some of you may know, he's been in our Joker podcast and uh, our Best of the Decade series. I feel like there is another one in there as well. Dr. Sleep. That's right, Dr. Yeah. Sleep. Talk yeah. about adrenochrome and... It was great. Child trafficking. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it is something y'all may know. Uh, Sasha also, he is in two podcasts. He's in Meandering and The Film Room. Yeah, Meandering with Morgan and Sasha is uh, it's my little, well, me and Morgan's uh, little baby, but uh, it's mm-hmm. cranking out fully now. And uh, Film Room's taking a back seat because, as you know, yeah, uh, there's not a lot of films that are out. And uh, I mean, there's just uh, not a lot of discussion to be had about the actual content that studios are releasing. So right. lo and behold, we get interesting stuff like this, though, to talk about. Yeah, for sure. Where where can they find your podcast at? Uh, Meandering with Morgan and Sasha is on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, Anchor. And you can even ask your Alexa device to just play Meandering with Morgan and Sasha, whatever nice. room you're in. There we go. So just ask your Alexa and she'll find it for you. Um, so yeah, so Ray Fisher, Ray Fisher, uh, if some of y'all do not know, um, he played Cyborg in uh, Justice League. Um, and he started a Twitter page um, around June 28th, I believe. Um, and I started following him right away because I thought, okay, so Ray Fisher, he hasn't been on Twitter. So, you know, most of the time, whenever actors get a Twitter page just out of nowhere, that's usually because they're announcing something. You know, a cyborg movie is coming. They just announced Flashpoint not too long ago. Maggie got hyped. So, yeah, I was ready. And I got something completely different. (laughs) But you're still hyped. Yeah, I'm still hyped. Like, uh, I mean, I didn't hate Justice League. I mean, I did whenever it came out. But I I rewatch it all the time. And it's kind of just one of those, like, bad movies that I still enjoy watching. But... Now, uh, knowing that the Snyder Cut's coming out in 2021, and it's almost going to be like a mini series yeah, type of thing. it's two-parter, right? I think it's like a four-parter. Really? Oh. It's like a four-hour thing. I don't know. Man. I have not actually read up a whole ton of it. Um, I just know it's coming, and I'm shocked that it's coming, to be honest. I didn't think the Snyder Cut actually existed and was going to actually be out there. Well, you know me, I'm a DC fanboy uh, over Marvel when it comes down to it. Um, my comic history goes back much further with DC than it does for Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've been in support of even their duds over the last 10 years or in other people's opinions, the duds. I, right. I hold firm and I think a lot of the stuff they put out in the last 10 years has been pretty good. And I like Zack Snyder's direction for the DC EU, EU that uh, he was taking up until the point where he had some tragedy hit and then he left uh, Justice League. Right. Um, filming, which, yeah, is yep. pretty important. I mean, which, in, if some of y'all don't know, um, we'll give a little bit of background before we go into it. So, um, Zack Snyder did uh, Batman versus Superman. And he also planned a, uh, he did also Man of Steel. He planned this three, uh, this trilogy arc with Justice League. And, um, after post-production and filming with uh, Justice League, he pulled out uh, because his daughter passed away and um, he brought in his good friend Joss Whedon to finish everything up. So he made the announcement in May uh, 22nd, 2017. He announces he's going to be stepping down and Joss Whedon's going to be taking over. Did a so, bunch of reshoots, um, changed a little bit of the writing. What people can tell, it basically took the movie in a different direction than what Snyder had, had intended. And so we get this movie, of course, as we all know, it didn't come out to very stellar reviews. Not a lot of people liked it at all. And people started, you know, I want the Snyder Cut. I want the Snyder Cut. So this is at a a time where the Snyder Cut was just myth. It was complete rumor. But Mm -hmm. the real diehards knew there was a Snyder Cut because we knew Zack Snyder's history with this sort of thing, especially coming off of Batman v Superman which added a 40-minute uh, addition to it once his right. director's cut there came out. So we knew there was there was more to be seen than the the dud that got the theatrical release. He has right. longer I mean, cut movies. Yeah, 300, Sucker Punch, they're all yeah. in director's cut formats. So mm-hmm. this, is Watchmen. His, this is his forte. And he's also, yeah, Watchmen is a, another great example. 
he's got a long history with WB mm -hmm. of getting stuff chopped on the cutting room floor and then coming out and releasing a much lengthier uh, director's cut. I mean, every movie Correct. that he's done with the WB or with WB Warner Brothers has followed that same formula. Right. And it's so it's kind of just been the whole thing with Justice League and Zack Snyder and Joss Whedon. Mm -hmm. I just watched the movie again. I think Justice League. Uh, I watched it last week on Thursday again because I knew we were doing the podcast. And so I just kind of wanted to get a refresher on the movie. Mm -hmm. Even though we're not going to be talking a lot about the movie, we're going to be talking more about Ray Fisher and what he's come out and said about Joss Whedon. But you definitely get a sense of knowing how Zack Snyder's vision is and Joss Whedon. You can definitely tell this was a Joss Whedon cut and this was a Zack Snyder cut. <laughs> So. Zach, Zach Snyder's had a very distinctive style since 300. Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of, you know, the slow pans and looks at uh, action uh, as a much more visceral sort of comic book style thing. That's why he was a perfect fit for all the DCEU stuff. Right. And yeah, um, you've seen the movie recently. I have not because I just can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> in, its, in its current format, I can't watch that movie more than the two times I've seen it. But there is some heavy CGI. Yes. That feels as if I, I would be willing to say the CGI wouldn't have even been there if Snyder had seen the whole production through to the very end, because mm -hmm. there's just stuff that sticks out like a sore thumb. It's almost like watching two movies within right. that one. Um, yeah. And it's distracting and very, it's very lame. Right. Very lame. There you go. That's a good point. Still a top 10 grossing Warner Brothers movie of all time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh... I was shocked to see that. I don't know. I didn't look into that. I think that's because we were all excited for mm -hmm. Justice League and where it was going to go. And one of my main takeaways is that we haven't had a, a Flash movie. that We haven't had a Cyborg movie to kind of get an understanding of where those characters are in this universe. I mean, we have a Flash WB TV show on um, CW. CW. Mm -hmm. And so... So it's pretty popular. Yeah, but we don't have anything cyborg related. And I remember telling Miguel, like, you know, cyborg was so interesting to me in his story, and we barely got anything out of it. So uh, that's why, whenever again, whenever Ray Fisher created an account, I was like, okay, cyborg movie is going to be announced, and you know, got to follow it, and because there's, I mean, right in the middle of the pandemic, yeah. so. I was like, okay, it's announcing. We can talk about it on the podcast. And then we got a whole slew of everything else. Right. <laughs> uh, just to get into it, we're, um, we're going to talk about uh, Ray Fisher and him coming out and saying that uh, Joss Whedon was verbally abusive to cast and crew, unprofessional, and we also accused... Uh, big execs from from the DCEU um, and Warner Brothers universe, uh, Jeff Johns and John Berg in there as well. He just got everybody. And for context, if if people out there don't know who Jeff Johns is, he's sort of the Kevin Feige of DC, right? Right. He was the chief ex uh, creative officer of DC Entertainment from 2010 to 2018. Um, and then he was president of the DC Entertainment from 2016 to 2018. So he's essentially the big wig in the office who makes decisions on the style of movie he wants to see to put people in theaters and the direction of the entire like storyline that the DC movies were taking the tone, the, the themes, the discussions that mm -hmm. are being had, the character arcs, all of that. That's what Kevin Feige did over at Marvel and for better or worse, it sort of worked out for them. Right. Um, being cookie cutter to some degree, but at the same time giving, uh, the right characters, the shine that they deserve. And Jeff Johns just tried to replicate all that with Man of Steel um, is what started off. And then mm -hmm. Batman v Superman, Aquaman, uh, Wonder Woman, and Justice League. I think Aquaman came out after Justice League. Yeah, I just got those two flip flop. But yeah, it's uh, he he's the guy who's pulling all the strings. Yeah, and uh, John Berg, he is the he's a producer and he's also a vice president of Warner Brothers Entertainment. So Ray Fisher said, "I'm calling all y'all out." Yeah, so. these are seven figure, eight figure get <laughs> names, and Ray Fisher is is this his first uh, American film? Yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah. Well, I think this is like one of his. Uh, one of his, like, I mean, at least big, big roles for sure. Gotcha. So, I mean, I haven't heard of Ray Fisher before this. And so this is the so. little guy. This is the little guy calling the big fish out. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. 
So first tweet of his um, is uh, we're just we're going to I'm going to break down all the tweets. And um, if you're listening like through Spotify or Apple podcasts, um, I am going to have a YouTube video out where I'll show all these tweets um, in a YouTube video. So that way you can actually see them. I have screenshots of all of them. Um, but whatever, um, all y'all that are actually listening through um, Spotify and Apple podcasts, I'm just going to read out what the tweets say. And I'm going to give you all a timeline of everything that's happened. So uh, before we start, uh, Sasha, how much knowledge did you have about this? Well, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say I was about a 4 going in. Now I'd say I'm a 6 or 7 comfortably. Yeah. So yeah. Nice. Yeah, because you didn't know a lot about it until I was like, hey, do you want to do this podcast? Right. So <laughs> I had heard of Ray Fisher being at odds with Warner Brothers. And I saw, I watched the Comic-Con video of uh, him and Jason Momoa discussing the Joss Whedon cut of mm -hmm. the film. And that was all I had seen. And people were sort of mocking that and, uh, or people online were analyzing that video, not mocking it and sort of honing into those two guys' reaction as they were discussing the film and how they looked very out of it and very like they were posturing basically. Right. And, uh, bullshitting their way through the comic-con panel right which is funny that you you know bring that panel up because that's the first thing oh, that good. tweets on uh june 29th is whenever all this starts june 29th um so ray fisher puts a uh video up from comic-con about them talking about joss whedon and it said i'd like to take a moment to forcefully retract every bit of this statement and basically talk about josh uh, uh joss whedon so that was the start of every, you know, fast forward a couple days later, uh, July 1st, um, he says, Josh Whedon's onset treatment of the cast and crew of Justice League was gross, abusive, unprofessional, and completely unacceptable. He was enabled in many ways by Jeff Johns and John Berg, accountability over entertainment. So that's something that he really starts to hone in on is accountability over entertainment on his, anytime he tweets about this kind of stuff. So that's going to be important going all the way through so uh so that's july 1st they uh warner brothers hired a barber for ray fisher that has never worked on black hair before so he brought in his own barber uh, which is wayne navard i'm probably not pronouncing that um correctly but despite my asking on multiple occasions this is a tweet from july 21st despite my asking on multiple occasions my barber was not credited in any capacity for his work on the theatrical version of justice league wayne worked for us for the entire principal photography process eight months a majority of the reshoots i didn't know barbers were in the credits I oh mean, yeah i did not know definitely that. They, holy cow they All definitely right. are oh yeah hairstylist I uh -huh. guess. oh okay they're part of the makeup and, and hairstyling crew mm -hmm. interesting so Wayne took over whatever time was asked of him from his successful business, a unisex barber salon called Extreme Cuts in St. Albans, uh, uh, United Kingdom, to work with There's us. There's a plug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to my knowledge, he was the only black man to ever grace the hair and makeup trailer. Um, it broke my heart, as I know it did Wayne's, to watch the credits roll and not see his name appear in any way. When Zach told me about this uh, Snyder Cut being released, I had only one request, and that was to be, uh, give Wayne credit for his work. Uh, Zach was shocked that Wayne wasn't credited in theatrical version and assured me that Wayne would absolutely be given credit in Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's not about a movie. These things go deeper than the artist's aesthetics. So accountability over entertainment. So. Hmm. Do you remember where you were late June, early July? Mm. What was going on in the world? I'm going to add the context here because it's important. The race divide that has gone on here in 2020 no. with the black versus white, just the complete uh, racial warfare that we're seeing perpetuated on a surface level more than at any time in my lifetime that I can remember. It feels like the 60s a little bit uh, mm -hmm. with the movement of civil rights and all that. Accountability mm -hmm. over entertainment is a heck of a good mantra to have. And I am fully on board with everything that we're going to discuss here about Ray Fisher, and I fully take his side. But the timing of this is very appropriate for the summer of 2020 to be, you know, bringing it to the forefront for better or worse. Um, right. Because 
maybe Ray Fisher knows that he is, like we've addressed already, a smaller voice in Hollywood. So this was his shot at really getting his message through and um, getting on Twitter. And Twitter was a firestorm over the summer from celebrities to notable figures to just everyday discussions that were being had about some pretty important topics. So I think uh, I'm putting the pieces of the puzzle together as to why he just up and got a Twitter account and mm -hmm. why he's upset about his barber not being credited is because, yes, uh, for the time, this is uh, this was his fight, you know, and this was his way of uh, making his voice heard and participating in the larger discussion that was being had in America. Right. Yeah, it's as something as as a barber not getting credited. It's just I mean, he did work. Why would you? not credit him it doesn't make it doesn't make a lot of sense to me um why that just wouldn't just happen on its own right um but yeah it's i mean these tweets these tweets get crazier oh boy <laughs> so july 31st um ray and if y'all want to look at ray fisher's tweets too he's at ray and then the number eight and then fisher f-i-s-h-e-r so um, in his pages verified. So that way you know you have the right one. It's not a bot. Not a bot, no. No pun intended, because he is a bot. <laughs> He's a cyborg, yeah. yeah. He, goes, he goes Borg life all the time. It's great. Um, but anyway, so uh, let's see. July 31st. I understand full well the personal and professional risk associated with my speaking out against the behavior of Josh Whedon and enablers, Jeff, uh, Jeff Jones and John Burke. I will not relent. This is a good trouble and necessary trouble, accountability over entertainment. So this is because he's still under non-disclosure agreements with the W, with, I keep calling them the WB, but it is the WB, it Warner is. Brothers. Yeah. He is still con contracted under several non-disclosure agreements from his signing on to play Cyborg in Justice League because as far as I remember, he's still potentially in future movies that Cyborg is involved with. So mm -hmm. any sort of, I never really got NDAs in Hollywood because I'm, I never got NDAs in general because I always look at them as something that you sign to what, not, not rat out some bad shit that's going on or some stuff that's going on uh, or insider information and whatnot. And I don't know that this sort of behavior falls under that but uh, I think that's what he's alluding to in his tweet about you know going up against um, opposition and mm -hmm. threatening a, a daunting task and challenge ahead I, I don't remember the terminology you you read off exactly in that last tweet but he made it seem as if there were forces that were directly opposed to what he uh, was going to be revealing and I think Part of that plays into the non-disclosure agreement that uh, right. he was signed under at the time, and he still is because he still could be cyborg in future Justice League movies, which is mm -hmm. really interesting to me. Well, I think um, it was announced that he is going to be in Flashpoint. Um, Good because he's not in, he's not Doom Patrol cyborg. I've watched no. Doom Patrol, and it's some other actor who's Doom Patrol cyborg. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they announced that he was going to be in Flashpoint. Good. So, and I mean, well, it, they might have to go back and do reshoots for yeah. the Snyder Cut version. So, yeah, he's still. So, I think that's why he's kind of dipping his toes. And I, well, I think he's playing a, his cards close to the vest too because he, um, he's just putting enough information out there to get people talking because th the tweets that he talks about with Warner Brother Media, um, or with Warner Media, sorry, are the ones that get him the most attention. So for his channel, um, hmm. let's see, but moving on. So August 6th, um, he writes, oh, I'm sorry, our, uh, August 12th, he writes during the LA reshoots for justice league, uh, Jeff John summoned me to his office to belittle me and my agents attempts to take grievances up the proper chain of command. He then made a thinly veiled threat to my career. So this behavior cannot continue accountability over, um, uh, entertainment. So during reshoots, like he's, you know, I mean, he's already trying to put stuff in and trying to go and make grievances about Whedon in 2017, 2018. And, you know, they're 
being on her. This is so this all, all of this is going on like two years ago. Yeah, this is when Justice League was reshooting because of mm-hmm. Zack Snyder's departure, which the film came out in 2017. So it had to be 2017. Yeah, so it had to be. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I think what came out in November. Oh, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a summer movie. It was a November, December release. Right. I don't think I wrote down. DC's anything. kind of d- been running with uh, Q4 releases. They did mm-hmm. that with Joker, Aquaman and. uh yeah, this this movie as well. Yeah. Um, so let's see. So August 20th, um, Fisher writes, After five weeks of interviews with various cast and crews, Warner Media has officially launched an independent third-party investigation to get to the heart of the toxic and abusive work environment created during Justice League reshoots. This is a massive step forward. I believe this investigation will show that Jeff Johns, Josh Whedon, and John Burke, among others, grossly abused their power during the uncertainty of AT&T's merger with Time Warner. Thank you, uh, Warner Media and AT&T, for taking strides to ensure a safer workplace for all accountability over entertainment. I should have asked you this at the start of the show. Why did it take Ray Fisher three years to go public with this stuff? I don't know. I might know. I might. It's a shot in the dark. But it does lend a hand into the theorizing I was doing earlier about the timing of this and all that. Is this a, is this not all is this not all propaganda in a way and advertisement for the the Snyder cut? <sighs> is this with with theaters or with uh, COVID happening and everything that's going on in the world, word of mouth and discussion online and so- through social media is kind of the only way that studios and their projects are staying relevant mm-hmm. right now. Because it's not like a teaser trailer is going to do it or anything like that. Even though it gets people talking, they're still in the back of your mind. You're like, am I ever going to see this movie? Because theaters right. are shut down. And with the Snyder Cut, it's a little different, right? Because it's coming out on HBO in 2021 it's got a firm date mm-hmm. i don't know talking crap about the execs at warner brothers kind of hyping up snyder cut you would think that that would hurt him you would think that that would put him on a blacklist very quickly we're talking about like a billion dollar entity here mm-hmm. that has probably done a lot worse shit than ray fisher is suggesting is being done to him even though as, as bad as all this is mm-hmm. there's probably some women out there who um, have some very riveting stories to tell about some executives within Warner Brothers. Right. Like anyone in Hollywood does mm-hmm. with any company. So I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a very interesting thing. I told you when you asked me to come on the show, I told you this is kind of like conspiracy theorying. Oh, yeah. Uh, a topic that's worthy of conspiracy theories. The more I hear about it, the more I'm like... <clears throat> Maybe all the parties involved want us to conspiracy theory all of this because it's good. It's good for business. Mm-hmm. You but, know, but, probing around, playing detective, doing what we're doing here, dedicating a podcast episode to it. This is, yeah, this but is we're, what they want. We're a very small, small podcast. Like we're we're like a little guppy in an ocean. <laughs> <laughs> like we're not anything. We're not anything that anybody's going to take seriously. But uh, I just wanted to talk about this because I just thought it was interesting. But mm-hmm. I don't think that I don't really think it's being talked about a lot because I mean, even some of the like this next tweet has twelve thousand uh, li- likes on Twitter. Yeah, it's still nowhere near what like Gal Gadot and. Um, Jason Momoa gets like whenever they tweet that they're going to the bathroom or something or like they're flying to an airplane. So he's not getting a lot of attention. And I mean, especially I think that he probably went through the channels, but then maybe saw. He should do a podcast. He has been on podcasts talking about About it. Yeah. And um, I will have links. Um, I should have mentioned this earlier. I'm sorry. Um, I'll have links to articles and um, about and videos that Ray Fisher has been on where he's talked about this a little bit more. Um, I believe it was Justice Con, um, something like that. He was on a podcast talking about it. Um, but there's articles that 
dealing hmm. with when, uh, with Warner Brothers or Warner Media. Did you listen to that mm-hmm. podcast? I did. Did you uh, did you feel as if he was he was coming from a, an authentic place? I do because he he basically has said um, that he's. I, and I think this might be a reason why it's taking him a long time. Um, and he said that he was waiting um, because he's had a similar and he's had a similar instance like this before. I don't know if it's with the entertainment industry or with another job. He wasn't very specific where he brought something to somebody's attention and he uh, basically spoke for other people instead of getting other people that felt like they were being um mistreated uh, mistreated and abused and stuff like that um he spoke for them instead of letting them like you know trying to get them to go and tell their own stories and so he ultimately said like people lost their jobs um on what i said so i'm trying to be very careful in what i'm saying and trying to you know tell people to talk about their experience um and know that their jobs are safe before they do so so that way they don't lose anything. I see. And um, and I didn't include this originally either, but um, Kevin Smith uh, briefly spoke about this on his podcast. But he um, he talked about it on his podcast, um, and I didn't want to include it because it's hearsay, but it's kind of relevant. Um, but he went to you know, I mean, Kevin Smith is, has his hands in everything DC, and so he's spoken to uh crew members and um who and actors you know ben affleck is a good buddy of his he said he's spoken to people and again he wasn't specific saying that he was told that it was a very different experience whenever it was snyder directing and whenever it was whedon directing then they said that they much preferred uh snyder's direction over joss whedon's direction so that was a big thing, but you know, he he said it was like a completely different environment. Who wouldn't? I mean, have you seen Avengers: Age of Ultron? Oh yeah, it ain't so great. Joss Whedon's career actually ain't so great. He's one of those guys that I mean, great. He's a notable name in Hollywood, and uh, he's got a lot of fans out there. Somewhat of a cult, arguably, because oh, yeah. of the content that he put out early on in his career in his heyday, which was Firefly and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which are memorable pieces of content with a lot of fans and a long tenure of high quality, just content in general. Josh Whedon got off to a heck of a good start at a young age, like a lot of aspiring creative minds do in Hollywood. And he was very quickly, because of the cult-like following that he had, handed like the keys to the city to do whatever he wanted after mm-hmm. Firefly and basically got the Avengers job or no, that came a little later. I don't know what his filmography is like in between Avengers one and um, Firefly, which is like a eight year gap. Avengers came out in Oh four. Yeah. Um, I'll have to look that up cause I am not positive either, but he was definitely yeah. on the radar of, big hollywood after all of that and oh he did serenity i guess he would have had to have done serenity yeah well i remember whenever it came out that he was going to be doing um avengers i was excited about oh he did cabin in the woods so did he he i thought that was adam wingard oh no he was a writer okay that's an interesting one um let's see he did dollhouse from the Fox show. Yeah, Eliza he did some Bushko. of those. Yeah. He did a couple of TV series before okay. um, or after Serenity um, and then going into Avengers. So I could see why Joss Whedon was on their radar for, to do Avengers because of the style of that New York battle scene and the sci fi elements of Avengers are very Firefly esque. And there is a distinct look to Firefly that makes it really stand out if you haven't seen that show it's probably one of the 10 to 15 best sci-fi shows in the last 30 years for sure it's very fun very engaging and a lot of good comedy to it but it is uh it's not super dark no and joss whedon's not a super dark kind of director avengers one and even age of ultron ultron who's like a very dark villain Mm -hmm. in the comics not so dark so 
Right. Flash forward to when Zack Snyder departs, who is a dark director who has a lot of uh, dark themes, dark and themes, and the themes tones, and, and even the palettes that he uses for the film itself are very sepian. And I love that word. <laughs> <laughs> they are sepian and they're very gritty and and whatnot. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, Man of Steel, Man is like mm -hmm. Superman to make him. I mean, he's he's everybody's here. Everybody loves Superman. He's so bright. He's you know yep. he's. He's it. That's like the superhero you strive to be. He was. He was dark too because he died. He was dark and then as he comes fuck. Back. Yeah, he was dark as fuck in in Man Justice of Steel, League. man. Yeah, and well, Justice well, League. Well, yeah, and Justice comes League. Back. Yeah. So, but oh man, but yeah, we'll we'll get into more. Good Joss because Whedon's I got talk. another ten minutes of bashing <laughs> the hell out of him. If you're up for it. Yeah. No, we'll we'll get to it because there's other people that have come out against him. So, uh, in support of Ray Fisher, but. All right, so next tweet is from August 26th. So he um, came out and um, had a was supposed to have a Zoom call with this third-party investigator. And um, it was supposed to be just a third-party investigator, and he was supposed to be telling them there's, uh, their experience. And there's other people on the call. The other people on the call would not allow him to talk to um, his other people like have any of Ray Fisher's people on the phone. So he was uncomfortable. He tweeted out an email that he sent to his agent and his crew um, that said, just got off the phone with the investigator had to end the interview early before going into detail with him. He's definitely been put on the case by Warner brothers picture and not Warner media. His findings will go directly and solely to Warner brothers pictures legal. He also had another person on the line as a witness, which we weren't made aware of. I told him I needed a rep on the line as well uh, for security for myself. Uh, he tried to keep me on the line, but I told him I would need to consult my team before proceeding. Can we jump on a call to discuss this soon? Best Ray. So, and this was a big thing is that Warner media was supposed to be the one hiring this third party investigator. So that way it's somebody's taking, you know, a, higher up in Warner Media AT&T in order to find out what's going on but now it's being investigated by Warner Brothers Picture which since Warner Brothers Picture is the one who's being accused of hiring somebody with yeah. this, you know, gross and negligent behavior. Um that was a big problem for Ray just so that way we can keep it all straight between Warner Brothers Pictures and Warner Media. So but yeah, so um that was that and then a couple of days later September 4th uh, Ray says, so you can better understand how deep this goes. After speaking out about Justice League, I received a phone call from the president of DC Films wherein he attempted to throw Joss Whedon and John Burke under the bus in hopes that I would relent on Jeff Johns, and I will not. Accountability over entertainment. Yeah, so he gets a call from a really high-ranking Warner official asking him, allegedly, to... Or not asking him, but um, sub subliminally telling him to take it easy on Jeff Johns. And this was all on Je Joss Whedon and the other guy. Mm -hmm. And sort of trying to deviate the attention that he was giving the high, high-ranking guys. I've been on the receiving end of this recently. I'm my co-host, Morgan <laughs> on meandering with Morgan and Sasha. Right. We like to play around that, you know, he's this covert agent and he does this role playing stuff. And anytime we bash the president of the United States, he likes to shift the attention to the more local officials that are responsible for the things that we're getting upset about on the show. Mm -hmm. This is sounds like exactly what's happening here, um, which can be taken multiple ways. But I'm still on board with everything Ray Fisher's standing up for whether it's that really sexy catchphrase, uh, accountability over entertainment, <laughs> which is, it's I mean, great. He, he's spot on, especially yes. in 2020. That That is for sure. Yes. Right. Well, and he's he said before, too, um, that if he has to go down, he's like, I don't care because, I mean, it's... He's down for the cause. He's ready. Yeah, he's ready. He's he, about that action. Yeah, and I mean, he says, um, which he hasn't, I don't think he I don't have it in a tweet. I looked through the tweets before. Um, but he said, if I'm wrong and I'm making all this up, sue me. Yeah. But y'all know I'm not lying, so y'all aren't going to come after like y'all aren't what does he want out of it though? I think he wants um 
I think that he wants a, you know, not to be feel like cast and crew can be mistreated just because they're working in the entertainment industry. Like they can't be talked down to. They can't, um, you know, you can't have somebody screaming in your face, director screaming in your face or saying that I'm going to ruin your career. And um, so he's trying to get at the hierarchy of power within just Hollywood in general. That's been around for a long time. Yeah. It works its way up from the executives who are sitting in billion dollar mansions and just pull the strings and they're the puppeteers and they, they put their favorite directors on certain projects because they like the style of direction that they take and they know their big box office draws, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then the director enters and he's sort of like the commander in chief on the film. And he has to be to a certain degree, especially if it's a writer director, mm -hmm. which makes this even more interesting because Zack Snyder was, he was a writer uh, right. and director to this. So justice league was sort of his baby. And of course the incident that occurred, he had to go right off. I mean, no ifs, ands or buts. So he had to leave. But Zack Snyder and Joss Whedon are friends, you mentioned. So Well, and yeah, and but it also came out too that Joss Whedon talked mad crap about Zack Snyder's vision really? for Justice League. Yeah. Huh. And so That's I think so interesting. So there's a little bit of jealousy, perhaps, there, I would say, because Joss Whedon has no room to criticize Zack Snyder. This is coming from an objective viewer and lover of movies who just watches them and says, if you put a Zack Snyder movie in front of me versus a Joss Whedon movie in front of me, oh, I'm going to pick the Zack, Zack Snyder, Snyder movie every step of the way for multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what gives Joss Whedon the chip on his shoulder unless it's like studios that just love the guy and he's, you know, a uh, buddy uh, chummy chummy with high ranking officials. Right. And I'm sure those stories exist in the Hollywood. That's how people get their foot in the door left and right in Hollywood. Well, and I'm sure he went to them and was just like, hey, I made Marvel. Let me do what I want. Or I made Avengers. Yeah. Let me do what I want. And so then they're just like, okay. And he tried to make it more like Avengers. Uh, we don't need the, you know, the jokes in there. And I mean, you can tell which ones are Joss Whedon jokes in Justice League because they just don't hit. They don't feel right. They hit for the 12 <sighs> to 16 year old crowd. Yeah. But... Talking about how, um, uh, Lois Lane is thirsty and, um, <laughs> oh, there's another bad one in there. Um, and I mean, you have the typical, uh, Joss Whedon trope where, you know, a guy falls on a girl, you know, and oh, it's a little bear yeah. Like that was, that's another thing that I'll bring up because there's another there's a whole thing about that scene in particular in Justice League between uh, the Flash and Wonder Woman, but I'll I'll get into that later. Directors like to air their dirty laundry out through scenes and characters right. and all that. Um, Joss Whedon is he's not uh, removed from being a human being who has a lot of issues, and behind the camera he can probably get him out to like feel some sort of vindication, but you're right about the tropes. They're very, they're very like childishly sexual. If you mm -hmm. look at the Joss Whedon history absolutely, and all that. And, um, I mean, that's a whole nother podcast. Oh yeah. Childish, childish sexual adults in Hollywood. Ugh. Um, it has been going, going on to September 5th. Um, so Ray posted a picture of uh, the earlier email that I talked about. And he said, thank you for the support and for seeing through Warner Brother Pictures. And I mean, he's he's at Warner Brother Pictures. So I mean, he's he's tagging them in these posts. Like he's like, I don't give a fuck. Y'all are going to see these posts. Um, Is but, that what happens when you tag other uh, at accounts? Because I do that to the president of the United States pretty frequently. Oh, yeah. They get a notification. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> Just like I, I tagged you in a post yesterday. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you get a notification. Yes. So, but yeah. Even if it's in the middle of a tweet, though? Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. okay. 100%. Awesome. I've been on Twitter for 11 years. Never knew that. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad I could teach you something. <laughs> even if it's nothing what we're talking about. That's great. Uh, anyway, September 5th. Thank you for all. Thank you all for the support and seeing through at WB Pictures desperate and scattershot attempt to discredit me to continue protecting those in power. I met with the investigator via Zoom on August 26th. Below is the email I sent to my team and to at Saga FTRA immediately after. And that was the email that I read before. 
Um, it's also worth noting that I made it clear to the world on August 21st that I would be vetting the investigator to ensure a fair and protected process for all witnesses. W at WB has escalated this to an entirely different level, but I'm ready to meet the challenge. Accountability over entertainment. How many followers is he up to now? Uh, I don't know. On his Twitter. I can look at it really quick. Ray Fisher is a former theater actor, correct? I believe so. I think that's where he got his start in the dramatic arts. Uh, he has uh, 70,000 followers. Okay. So. So uh, he is a guppy. Oh, yeah. All right. So you're saying guppies can can make stands and stand up to the big sharks of the world, even though they're guppies. I, I mean, I hope so. Oh, they can, Maggie. They can. Mm -hmm. Or I'm sorry, Mad Mags. <laughs> they People can. People know my name on here. You're all good. For sure. Let's this see. is, um, I like where this is going with Ray Fisher because, yeah, Everything you touched on at the st at the jump is accurate. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people know who Ray Fisher is, and for him to be saying all this, there he has to have leverage. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he the little people who do know Ray Fisher, they're disinterested in Ray Fisher from this point forward. If he's just fabricating it all and doing it for attention, right. he's only got fifty thousand followers. It's not like seventy thousand. Oh, sorry. It's not like he's the front page uh, news on People or Inter e, uh, Entertainment Weekly or whatever. The story is not garnering huge headlines because right. because this story is probably a story that's systemic in Hollywood, as we've hinted at earlier on. This is not an isolated event, but no one else seems to want to speak up to this level of... Um, He's pretty direct about it. He's not uh, mm -hmm. beating around the bush. He's no. journaling it almost step by step through his tweets, which which is interesting. He's not presenting one entire case to like a lawyer or anything like that. He is chipping away at it and giving us almost live updates as it occurs, right. which keeps us abreast to exactly uh, what he is experiencing in real time, which is unique. Mm -hmm. Which he was pretty silent between uh, September 17th, and then he popped up today with something. No, it's so. probably negotiations for <laughs> yeah, uh, Flashpoint Paradox I'm, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm telling you. Some, like, this is, a, I, don't, I don't know whenever the Snyder Cut was officially promised, but I feel like it's around this time, and so they're talking about negotiations gotcha. and stuff. Gotcha, so, yeah. But so uh, the next tweet is from September 7th. It says, it is really a shame that ad WB pictures willfully chose to publicly undermine the seriousness of the toxicity and abuse that myself and others have reported to WB HR and labor relations. They try to minimize me as being an actor with a petty creative difference. They failed accountability over entertainment. So, hmm. cause what they, what I did see is, um, and I did see people cause I'll go underneath his tweets and I'll see people being like, you're just mad that you weren't in it enough and no one cared about your character, blah, blah, blah. Like you were terrible in it. And now you just want to, you know, you just want to talk yourself up to give you more, yeah. more screen time for um, the Snyder cut. Yeah. And what I have to say to that is from Zack Snyder's own mouth during um, the, during Comic-Con this year, San Diego Comic-Con, whenever it was announced, the Snyder cut is happening. And he did a virtual uh, meeting. He says that Cyborg is the heart of his, was the heart of his movie. And it's going to be, you know, he's going to go back to that um, in his cut. But Cyborg is the heart of the movie. It's going to be really interesting to watch this Snyder cut and see whether or not that statement is, holds up and is accurate. Right. Because, I mean, in the theatrical release, he was a sub character like he was a Absolutely. supporting character it was all about the three big uh big main protagonists batman superman and wonder woman yep and cyborg and flash took a back seat even to like steppenwolf and uh the other villain um i can't remember was uh, there dark side villain? well yeah he wasn't even on there he was just mentioned oh, that's one true. time there was one mention but in the one snyder yeah. cut i think we're gonna get to see a lot more of dark side yeah. as well so yeah, you can see the picture taking shape here. The fact that um, Ray Fisher's argument is probably 
a hundred percent rooted in fact. And in 2017, it was a different world. Hollywood, DC especially, was feeling some pressure. They uh, Suicide Squad came out soon after that, right? And was a dud as well, or before? Yeah. It was before. Mm. I think it was twenty summer 2017, or I it think, was 2018. A year later, I can't get my dates right with comic movies because there's so many to remember. Well, I hated Suicide Squad. It was yeah, trash. And y'all can fight me on that. I don't care. I hated Suicide Squad. Where my argument's going is DC has been the underdog in the uh, comic to big screen back and forth that the last decade saw. I can play devil's advocate and say that Jeff Johns was not going to let anything interfere with the direction that he wanted Justice League to be finalized in. Like it was it was a whole ass year before Oh, it was 2016. It was 2016. So Dang, again, 4 years so ago. So that's a big dud. Crap. Yeah. Uh, a big dud and it's important to note the duds. Batman v Superman theatrical release, a dud mm-hmm. with uh with fans and with a Critics. box office arguably. Yeah. It made its money, but just as far as the direction of the movies, they were all duds. Not not a lot of people like Man of Steel. I like that movie too. I like, yeah, I like Man of Steel. The director's cut, Batman and Superman. Don't get me started. We'll be here until three in the morning. Right. And you can listen to that one on oh twenty two thousand six. Uh, or I'm sorry, twenty uh, twelve. Some I don't remember when Batman versus Superman. Twenty thirteen. Uh, so twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Sasha goes into. <laughs> a lot of detail about Batman vs Superman, uh, specifically director's cut, which he, you know, we did watch, and it was great. It yeah. made it made the movie made so much more sense to us. Yes, it's a but, Zack Snyder movie. Yeah, and again, I don't think the WB wants their movies to make sense to crowds that were arguably in a like Marvel zone where. You know, it was all about the CGI, the big names, the big characters. And if all of that is accurate and it is superimposed over the politics of how WB was handling their movies in the latter part of last decade, then Ray Fisher is 100% speaking the truth. Yeah. The only thing that I still don't understand is what he wants out of it all because... I don't know that there is a deep-rooted racial thing going on here with his situation specifically. He hasn't come out and said, like, Joss Whedon's a racist. He hasn't come out and said, Joss Whedon called me all these names and he treated me just like I was a third-rate, just terrible person, and Mm -hmm. he pushed me around and all that. He said things that other actors have said about directors because there are bad directors out there. Like Megan Fox. Yes. Okay. There you go. With with uh Michael Michael Bay, Bay from Transformers. Perfect example. So Ray Fisher's not treading new ground in that area. And he needs to make sure that he doesn't fall victim to the climate of the real world right now and what's going on, because there are bona fide real victims of injustice and Um, just being treated very poorly because of the color of their skin. I don't want to see his cause get washed away because he puts, he puts that above everything because he knows that it can get some rallying behind him. If he just pulls those cards, right? He's got enough support from the cast itself. Uh, Jason Momoa has sort of, echoed some of the same things without being too vocal about it and uh, oh no he's been super vocal oh has he okay, oh yeah catch we'll, me up on that well we'll we'll get to there because right. there's been several people from from justice league that has come out in support of i gotcha so we have three more tweets to read Stay focused right there, um, sure. <laughs> so september 14th uh tweet it says to date the independent um and quotation marks from fisher Uh, To date, the independent firm hired by WB Pictures has conveniently avoided contacting key witnesses who uh, gave damning statements to WBHR. They've also stated, um, started interviews with and have since ghosted witnesses that have implicated former and current top level executives. So others included in implicating individuals that called me to apologize have already been interviewed. We will not let any investigator cherry pick interviewer any interviewees 
that best suit WB uh, pictures, false narrative, and scapegoating efforts. All stories, all with stories, will be heard. Accountability over entertainment. So let me go into the last two really quick before we go any further. Um, but September 17th, um, he says, due to uh, the purpose, purposeful lack of transparency and in some cases blatant lies on the part of WB Pictures and the third party firm hired by them to investigate Justice League, an official request for a change of investigator has been made of Warner, uh, Warner Media. So as to protect the witnesses involved and the information they possess, I strongly encourage any and all that have been contacted by the current investigator to respectfully decline to interview until a truly independent third party is engaged by at Warner Media Accountability over Entertainment. But so, even then, is it truly an independent person? If it's anything Warner affiliated, can we expect the honest, like, because we're talking about an oversight committee, for lack of a better term here, somebody who's coming on to assess the entire situation and who is neutral mm -hmm. and make the right decision. Kind of like, like the Supreme Court of this particular situation. They're going to make an ultimate decision, and I'm still lost as to, like, what happens if they side with Ray Fisher? Then what's going to happen to, I mean... I don't know. Well... Um, speaking of that, with the, so I do have an article here from Hollywood Reporter that says Warner Brother, blah, 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 sorry, Warner Brother media leaders concerned and disappointed with internal culture reports. Um, this came out. Um, go, I have an ad that's popping up. Hold on, mm. let me see anything. Okay, uh, have September. To bring you on the and talk about that. Yeah, ad. September seventeenth is whenever that article came out. So Warner Media CEO Jason Kalar uh, says the company has hired a third party to review its production uh, business and may terminate business relationships that do not live up to company conduct standards. So this is going on. And now if you remember, they're addressing uh, reports of poor workplace cultures at the Ellen DeGeneres show, TMZ on TV and other shows uh, produced by a subdivision, telepictures and two new memos. So if you remember, um, Ellen, the Ellen DeGeneres show, she Ellen got shit all over. Yeah, because of the treatment of staff. Oh, treatment of staff, exactly. Now they fired um, senior execs at the Ellen DeGeneres show, but not Ellen DeGeneres herself. Which, from what I understand, she was a main problem. Um, now the last tweet that Fisher did, which was today, uh, so what complicates the situation with Joss Whedon and Jeff Johns? is that appropriate action wasn't taken with them in real time. As a result, they were allowed to spread to out Warner Brother Pictures sister companies. It's a tricky knot, but we will untie it. Accountability over entertainment. Now, Jeff Johns left, um, you know, being CEO or CCO of um, Warner Entertainment to go to, um, like they said, the sister company. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. But he left, he stepped down to go work on Warner something else. And he's actually going to be heading the reboot of Green Lantern. No. So, so this is what he's talking about is. Well, then my hopes just got shat on because Jeff Johns is not a, he's not a creative direction that I'm interested in paying attention to. So, yeah. So it looks like Green Lantern might be another dud. Um, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight articles that are going to be listed in the description bar. So if y'all want to look at more of that, um, I'm going to have like a little thing of what this each is like article the JFK is. JFK assassination of WB movies. No. <laughs> There's so many rabbit holes to there, go down. I mean, there really is. It's a big rabbit hole of just, just stuff whenever you start looking into it. And um, it's interesting that I, I mean, I think because Ray Fisher did start to come out and say something um i think that maybe is what probably led to people that worked at ellen and tmz on tv to start maybe speaking out because like you said maybe. like he's you it know he's a chain reaction type thing yeah he's we he, saw it with me too and we saw it right with other uh things that were going on and so it's you know he's he's not a guppy oops sorry he's not a guppy like like we are in this he's he's a little bit of a fish in the ocean like you know you, you he's can, a minnow yeah you can see him and so he's made a little a little ripple effect 
um, I think at Warner Media. But I mean, he's coming out and fully saying, like, you know, I'm not just going after Joss Whedon, I'm going after the people that were enabling him. Ah, yes, the enablers. Yeah, that's they were a, enabling them. That's a hot term in so, 2020. And so they really wanted to, um, you know, and I, I might have nine articles because I just found another one, and I don't well, know if damn. it's one I already linked, but, but yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. So this has been going on for five months. So, and I mean, I, we're just scratching the surface. I think that, and well, Ray Fisher's just scratching the surface. I think. Um, all right, so now that we've gone over all the tweets that Ray Fisher has come out with, so we'll talk about now accusations that have come out with uh, Joss Whedon um, in the past. So um, these aren't necessarily people that have um, spoken out because Ray Fisher is saying anything. This is just going back um, to what was said at the time. So um, two people in particular – uh, which was Jeff Pruitt and Sophia Crawford. They were stunt doubles on um, on Buffy, I believe, and apparently started dating. Joss Whedon had a huge problem with it, which you know I kind of I kind of understand. Um, you know, having two people in like crew um, dating usually cause problems. Whatever. Usually. Usually. Sometimes it works out, and you have a kid. Right. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it does work out. And so it's, um, but apparently he had a huge problem with it um, and told them you either need to break up or y'all are going to get fired. And they, that tells me all I need to know about the type of person and manager or sort of director and uh, higher up Joss Whedon is. Yeah. So eventually they, yeah, they wrote their, um, their resignation letters the next day and went and worked somewhere else. Good for them. And I believe they are married now. Good for Um, them. So another one is Charisma Carpenter. Uh, Carpenter. She worked on um, Angel, um, and she became pregnant during the series. Joss Whedon had a huge issue with that because he had to change the season um, or the direction Aww. of how the season was going to go with her character. Yeah. And so um, I did not watch Buffy or or Angel, and um, but just from reading about it, she. Her character uh, got put into a coma um, and she was in a coma and there's like a big thing in later seasons to have her come back. And so she came back only to be, to be killed off. Uh -huh. um, I'm trying to see. She was Cordelia Chase in the Angel series. Um, but yeah, so a huge problem with that. Um, you know, that's another thing is, you know, whenever you're an actress, whatever, getting pregnant during TV show movie is always a huge issue. But, yeah. but yeah, so I uh, had an issue with that. Um, his wife um, wrote a open letter after they divorced. Um, uh, K Cole, K A I, I'm my, yeah, K K K Cole um, wrote an open letter to the rap, which. I didn't know if I particularly wanted it to address because I'm like, she could just be, you know, angry. Oh, we know everything we need to know about Joss Whedon already based on the two stories you just rounded up because yeah. we all have, well, I can't speak for myself anymore. We all have jobs out there <laughs> and we all know what it's like to have a management team and we can all put ourselves in these people's shoes and say, okay, if I got pregnant and I had to tell my boss that I needed, uh, a month or two off to take care of the prenatal and the post delivery stuff. What would their reaction be? Would they be optimistic and congratulatory and celebrate with me and say, take as much time as you need? Or would they, would they be very upset about the fact that I got pregnant while working on the job? Right. And the same thing goes for the other story as well about the folks dating. I have been in those exact shoes where I had to present a relationship being had within the confines of the workplace. And I had to be adamant that it would not affect my work at all. And lucky for me, I had a manager who understood it completely and was very, very cordial about it and respective, uh, respectful about it because he knew the type of people that he was dealing with. And right. so in return, I made him co-host of my show. 
Uh, <laughs> but we all know the opposite side of that, and the ugly mm-hmm. side, and we know what those people look like. They're entitled, spoiled brats. That's pretty much it, who are get off on power and get off on authority and putting people in their place when the opportunity arises. Right. That's Joss Whedon. I don't need to know the guy to know that that's Joss Whedon. Yeah, and um, to kind of bring it back to, so, and again, this is, this is again, this is all hearsay, um, because... Uh, when does it become, maybe that's what Ray Fisher's doing here, because it needs to not be hearsay. It needs to be, like, it, stamped and sealed, these motherfuckers are bad. Well, I believe that um, that people have witnessed these things, but... They're trying to keep it under wraps because I don't know if these particular people have said anything. So, like, for example, Ben Affleck. There was rumors that I saw that Ben Affleck, um, at one point, furious about how Joss Whedon was treating everybody on set, that he organized a walkout. And that the execs at uh, Warner Brothers talked him out of it. Okay. Um, You know, Ben Affleck, who is a director himself, um, award-winning director. Yeah. Um, possibly staging a walk off of another director. Like, I mean, that would have made headline news. That would have been huge news. <laughs> and um, another thing was um Gal Gadot, and she had a uh, she didn't like the scene where uh, Flash goes to save Wonder Woman, and uh, Flash, you know, falls on top of her, and he gets all embarrassed and comes up. You know, the scene that I'm talking about yep. and the, uh, In the uh, silo. Gotham. Yeah. The Gotham underground. Mm-hmm. And so that scene is a typical Joss Whedon scene. Cause he did the same thing with, uh, uh, Banner and, um, uh, Natasha Romanoff, yeah. um, in age of Ultron, I believe. So it's, it's, it's following the same thing. And if you watch the movie and look at that scene, um, gal is not looking at the camera so her face is looking away and so people believe that that was not gal that film that scene it was a stunt double and the reason why she had a problem with it because she felt like it was over sexualizing wonder woman and you know it i mean because she's the old because she's the only woman on the team it doesn't really need to be on there they need to you know ha- stick show to their guns respect and, and it has nothing to do with justice league or wonder woman or anything right. like that yep. like it's just a a tasteless joke mm-hmm. And apparently Joss had a huge problem with that, um, saying that she's going to do the scene or he's going to, again, ruin her career. Um, There was a rumor that he locked her in a closet. Um, I don't it seems so far fetched to me how you can do that. But wild. I mean, her movie made a lot, a lot of stupid money. And people loved her Wonder Woman. And so I think that she felt like she could stand up. Yeah, it was 20. Hers came out in 2017 as well. Um, Summer. So Justice League was right on the heels of their of her success for Wonder Woman. But yeah, Joss Whedon had a huge problem with uh, with her, apparently. Um, I didn't hear anything about Ezra Miller. Um, but I think that... What about, what about our boy, Jason Momoa? Every... Every girl's favorite crush. Was he outspoken about this at all? Uh, he was. So um, Jason Momoa actually came out and uh, in support of um, Raymond Fisher. Yeah, came out in support of Ray um, on Instagram on September 7th and said that um, he, he just said, I stand with Ray Fisher. So. Um, a couple of other people that have come out um, in support of Ray Fisher is uh, Matthew Cherry. Um, he commented on one. Who's that? Uh, Matthew Cherry. He did a uh, documentary. So people that have come out in support of Ray Fisher is Matthew A. Cherry. He commented on one of Ray Fisher's earlier tweets from July 1st talking about Josh Whedon, you know, specifically naming him. Um, saying, thank you for speaking out, Ray. Got your back. Um, Matthew A. Cherry, he uh, wrote and directed um, Hair Love, which was a a seven-minute short that won an Oscar for um, Best Animated Short Film. Is it about the love of hair? Yeah, it's about, like, love of... Oh, that's why I didn't see it. 
<laughs> I ain't got none. It's it's a little girl that um that is trying to fix her hair. She has like oh. you know big hair, and so they're trying to um help her love her hair because she wants straight hair, and you know. Uh, so they're trying to help her love her hair. You're making me sad thinking about it. Yeah, it's it was a really cute short, and I think they're actually making an animated series about it too. So they're they're expanding it, but um, but that's that's about uh, Matthew Cherry. So he came out, so he didn't have anything to do with um with Justice League, but he just came out. That was just somebody that um came out in support of Ray Fisher, and then on September seven, Jason Momoa came out. Um, I said he supported him. Uh, Carisi. Um, I think that's how you pronounce her name came out on September 11th um, and in support of uh, Ray Fisher. She came out on Instagram saying I stand with Ray Fisher. So her um, you didn't see her in Joss Whedon's um, Justice League, but you will see her in the Snyder cut. She was a romantic interest for the flash. So oh, okay. all her parts completely got cut. Gotcha. So, and then you also have Karen Bryson who came out and said, I support or I stand with Ray Fisher is the hashtag. I stand with Ray Fisher. She played um, his mom in the cyborgs mom. in cyborgs mom in the movie. So I don't know if they're planning on expanding her role or anything like that, but she's in at least one or two scenes in justice league, but it's only as like a flashback. So, gotcha. because you know, she's, you know, she's dead in, in cyborg or not in cyborg in justice league. So, but those are the people so far that have come out in support of Ray Fisher. So you have three people from the initial movie that have said something, and then somebody that's outside of the movie that's saying that they got their back. Um, and actually, John Borg has, he's the only one that's actually commented on anything um, that Ray Fisher has said. Um, he just came out with a statement saying that, you know, Ray Fisher's lying. Yeah, I was going to say it so blatant like was that. Joss Whedon had any zero sort of, comments, yeah. but he, so, and this is the thing, and this is why people are like really surprised on whenever some of those comments came out about how he treated Gal Gadot, because you know, Joss Whedon, whenever I was watching um, Avengers, I, I liked Joss Whedon. I was like, Oh, okay. Joss Whedon has Avengers. Most likely I'm going to like it. And really it was just, you know, I'm excited to see all the Avengers in one movie, you know? So, um, and for what it's worth, at the time, this is in hindsight, of course, mm -hmm. the Avengers movies back then were okay. Yeah. Uh, the first Avengers did what it needed to do, and it was all right. Right. And Age of Ultron is what it is. It gets a lot of uh, hatred where it's not completely terrible. Mm -hmm. But looking back, those are easily the weakest entries in the Avenger in the event in the Avengers storyline for sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of the weakest MCU entries, period. Right. And we're talking about 15 years worth of movies. So yeah, hindsight is 2020, and uh it paints a it paints a declining career, in my opinion, for Joss Whedon. So uh it's a weird mix because if you get a strong sort of personality like his who's borderline narcissistic, I want to say at this point, uh, likes to be in control and likes to, uh, as a director should, put people in their places and sort of uh, steer the ship, but can cross some lines every once in a while, then mm -hmm. yeah, it, it the writing's on the wall and uh, all this speculating and all this hearsay needs to be confirmed one way or another so that we can look back at this episode and say, oh yeah, we were right about everything. Yeah, well, and what's what's crazy too is that in his ex-wife's open letter, um, she said that he's he's known for developing strong female characters, you know, and so Dollhouse, uh, Buffy, Buffy. Of and so that really, um, she said that according to Joss, whenever they talked about getting divorced, he was like, "Yeah, I absolutely use that to my advantage." I got to sleep with actresses. I slept with fans. Like, man, apparently he was, he used that to his advantage playing up saying I'm a feminist and you know, like I'm, you know, giving all these female characters a voice and, but a lot of his female characters, um, again, I did. Sounds familiar. Sounds I, a little Harvey Weinstein. -y. Uh, yeah, but it's, I, again, I didn't watch Buffy or Angel or a lot of his stuff before Avengers, but, like a lot of his female development has to do with them being raped. And that is not something that 
I believe a female character needs to go through to have development. That's a, that's another. It's just a it's just a trope in Hollywood that I wish would go away. That females need to have some kind of you know violence happen against them in order to have some kind of development. Like you can get development from female characters without violence, but right. whatever we're we're trying to steer in that direction. But you know whatever. Yeah. That's a whole another podcast. Um, we'll bring you on meandering for that talk. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Just air out all my grievances about that. But yeah, so it's it's just um, yeah. So he has stereotypes very much so in his movies um, that you see in Justice League, and it's you know, and I think that based off of and again, these aren't actresses and actors that are coming out against him besides uh charisma carpenter but you know those stunt doubles you know they didn't need to say anything i mean they left the project right you know they left buffy went to another well they didn't show. say anything for 20 years as well right and they for what it's worth they took advantage of the situation that they had uh with the ray fisher talks and they came out as well there's an argument to be said uh, or to be made for whether that's right or wrong in the climates that it is. I'm I'm one who likes to feel as if you have something to say that you don't feel um, is right and you have to speak up on it, then take accountability for it, as Ray Fisher has said. Accountability over entertainment. Right. And I, I do have a, an issue with people that put things off for an extremely long period of time and then sort of ride the coattails of someone who uh, is introducing the topic and then they come swooping in and they say, Yes, yes. But in this particular case, they are supporting Ray Fisher by telling their experience. So they're not trying to take the spotlight away or anything like that. Uh, they're just sort of adding context to the entire discussion, which is good. Right. But you got to um, be cautious is all I'm saying. Be cautious with you people do. who are like 25 years later or scorned perhaps because Joss Whedon didn't cut him a break on the next show and let him go because uh, they had a relationship which... May have been overblown and may have gotten in the way of some stuff. We don't know. Uh, right. So Exactly. We don't know. But um, those are the people that have come out against Ray Fisher. Or I'm sorry, not against Ray Fisher, but against Joss Whedon. Um, and I'll, again, I'll have an article linked to their discussion down below in the description. If y'all want to look at it, I think that it's just, everything is just scratching the surface here. And if you're wondering, you know, if you if you stayed along uh, all of this, I appreciate it. But if you're wondering why you ha maybe haven't heard of all this stuff going down, um, there is a reason why. Uh, so July 1st, the day that um, Ray came out and said, uh, you know, Joss Whedon has uh, his onset treatment of the cast and crew was gross, abusive, and unprofessional, and completely unacceptable. So that first tweet on July first, um, we got big news from uh, you know an upcoming movie from Jason Momoa. Yeah, he's going to play Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman, a completely untrue story, but it was everywhere because everybody was like. Oh, Jason Momoa playing Frosty the Snowman. Mm -hmm. So completely overshadowed. It's the it's really just the Aquaman origin story. And Frosty oh. melts. <laughs> Climate change. <laughs> Climate change. <laughs> but yeah, so we have, you know, Ray Fisher coming out, you know, about Joss Whedon. And then, oh, a couple hours later, here's a Frosty the Snowman. Um Frosty the Snowman announcement with Jason Momoa. So an exclusive uh, that John Berg is going to be heading with uh, Jeff Johns. Which the way you explained it to me when we were talking about this episode, I want you to almost re-explain it because it was very fascinating to me. The immediacy of uh, this press release from WB execs that, well, it's confusing too because it's not a real movie. And it's easy to realize very quickly that it's not a real movie. So why the mm -hmm. hell? Why would they do this? I, as I'm telling you, it's to distract. It's to distract. That's the only reason why. 
is to distract from the narrative that he's trying to paint. And that's it. And they can swallow their pride and, and later say like, yeah, it's not a real movie, mm-hmm. but they'll never admit that it was to distract from the Ray Fisher talks that were gaining steam. Right. Wow. So mm. August 20th, um, you had a tweet from, from Ray about, um, you know, about the third party investigator, um, that's saying after five weeks of interview, their Warner Media is going to launch a independent third party investigation. Big news, right? Because that's them almost sort of acknowledging that there might have been an issue on set that they're going to look into, right? Again, you might not have heard about that article because also on August 20th, Ben Affleck was announced that he will return as Batman in The Flash. No, oh, I got you. Yeah, that takes precedent for people who are sitting around waiting for movie news and waiting for big press releases. And whatever's going on with Ray Fisher takes a backseat at that point. Mm -hmm. I see. I see where this is trending. So, yeah, now strategic studio news updates to uh, sort of slow the traction and momentum that the other story was getting. Because it was starting to gain a lot on Twitter specifically with the whole hashtag, right, at this point? Mm -hmm. I stand with little, Ray Fisher. Yeah, starting to get a little bit of traction. And then in September 17th, you have Ray Fisher again saying, due to purpose, uh, purposeful lack of transparency in other cases blatantly lies on the part of WB and the third-party firm hired by them to investigate Justice League. An official request for a change of investigator has been made of Warner Media. So he points out that Warner Brother Media is the one who hired this third-party investigator and now Warner Media is requesting a new investigator because they knew that it was going to be a biased investigation because Warner Brother Pictures is the one who hired the investigator instead of Warner Media. Of course. So again, another acknowledgement of some, you know, shape or form that foul play. Foul play. Now, what other news might have dropped on September seventeenth? Hmm. Uh, Snyder cut. Official? Henry Cavill signs a new Superman film deal. Oh, of course. Ah, yes. And this is um, also... Well, Henry Cavill's got a lot going on. He's mm-hmm. doing the Witcher stuff. So everybody's kind of riding high on him, Henry Cavill. So he's mm-hmm. an easy out as well. The only problem I have with this, and um, it's all legitimate to point out the timing of, for sure. But... These are news releases that will have to come out eventually. And the Ray Fisher stuff does not, like you said, it's scratching the surface. We're not getting anywhere close to resolution with the Ray Fisher thing. I think it's going to have to, it's all in his court at this point, And he's going to have to really push the ball forward and start exposing some, some more stuff. These news releases have to come out eventually. Mm-hmm. It's this. It is the timing and the cascade effect of of one after another after another that's intriguing to me, and that's certainly when we take a look at what's going on in like the world of politics and all that and bureaucracy and the way it works. That's how it works. Uh, Trump's taxes come out, and then a week later he's got COVID. Right. It's that sort of same thing. Mm-hmm. It's steer the attention away. Mm-hmm. Uh, old movie with. Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman called Wag the Dog that goes over this very right. thoroughly and how it works in politics. I just Hollywood and politics are one and the same. They are very bureaucratically driven and very hierarchically people in power like to preserve the power that they have and any threat to them, uh, especially in this day and age, information age. Mm-hmm. These people that are have seen Harvey Weinstein get exposed, have seen Jeffrey Epstein get exposed have seen countless others get exposed they are starting to learn how to uh counteract those procedures that are bent on exposing them rightfully so there's some real monsters in both of these realms that need to be uh, known and put on in front of a spotlight Mm -hmm. their reactions are getting a lot (laughs) slyer and i think you're on to something with the timing of all these news releases because at the end of the day, we're talking about saving the image of one of the three biggest uh, movie production studios in the world. I mean, there's right. Disney, there's Warner Brothers, and Sony. 
I guess. Yeah, uh, probably Sony would be yeah, the next Sony. one. Yeah, Sony. That's that's how I rank them. I just I didn't know until I started really diving into it and started looking back and seeing that whenever there was some kind of big news about um, the investigator and the allegations, that there was some kind of news coming out just hours later. I'm like, this feels, it feels, it's a distraction. And it, you know, and really in Jason Momoa, he also came out um, and said that it's a distraction on his, Hmm. on his Instagram. um, I don't know if he has a Twitter or not, but um, when I used to have an Instagram, I followed him and I saw, um, yeah, Jason Momoa, something. Jason Momoa's Twitter is at I am excess. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Go follow. <laughs> I'm gonna I am excess. <laughs> I'm going to get like a handful of followers. Be like, this is a Jason Momoa. What? This guy's frail looking. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, so he said, um, on Instagram, he said, this shit has to, this, the shit has to stop. And needs to be looked at. Ray Fisher and everybody else who experienced what happened under the watch of WB Pictures needs proper investigation. I just think it's fucked up that people release a fake frosty announcement without my permission to try to distract from Ray Fisher speaking up about the shitty way we were treated. We were treated oh, on Justice League reshoots. Serious stuff went down. It needs to be investigated. People need to be held accountable. Hashtag I stand with Ray Fisher. Aloha. All righty. Um, but yeah, it's it, a weird, it's a weird mix of stuff. And I go back to something I said earlier about the NDAs, the non-disclosure agreements, mm-hmm. that particular Jason Momoa is a, a star in Hollywood and has a lot of money to his name. And he even seems reserved in the amount of information that he's willing to uh, divulge probably because of NDAs. Ray Fisher, on the other hand, probably just getting going in Hollywood, just making a name for himself. He knows that he, if he doesn't tread very carefully moving forward, he could probably, under the the rule of the law that NDAs, this is why they're so stupid, um, he knows that he could probably get sued very heavily if he, if he just comes out and says, here's how we were mistreated. And that's why he's sort of beating around the bush in the last uh, three or four months and not really right. telling it like it is just flat out because he can't. Right. And um, that's a weird predicament to be in. But hopefully, hopefully he just keeps on pressing because I, you got to feel like he's close. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting whenever it sees it come out because, I mean, and we saw what um, we saw what happened to Megan Fox whenever she spoke out against um Michael Michael Bay. Bay. I directed keep, by Michael Bay. Yeah, whatever she said, like, you know, he's a dictator and he blackboard her say that she was difficult to work with, that she's just being a spoiled brat. You know, I'm not gonna work with her anymore. She wasn't in what Transformers three, I think, but she came back after she had to publicly apologize. Right. And so, but I mean For what it's worth, Michael Bay has not gotten crapped on by a lot of his female leads. Scarlett Johansson and the island didn't say anything bad about Michael Bay. Yeah, but Scarlett Johansson also worked with Joss Whedon on Avengers. That's true. That's true. She might be the strong silent type who just deals with it mm-hmm. and and continues about. Yeah. And but but I mean she also spoke out um Meg, she I mean Megan Fox tried to speak out against Michael Bay even before she was in a Terminator movie. She was in another movie. Transformers. I wish my uh, no Megan Fox was in a Terminator movie. I mean, not Terminator. Oh my gosh, no Transformers. She was in another movie that before Transformers, um, and I don't remember what it was, but it was a Michael Bay movie, and you know she was there. She was an extra, and Michael Bay really liked her. Um, Bad Boys too, maybe. I don't know, but there was a scene where, like, I think it was a bar scene or something like that. She talked about it on a late show with somebody saying that, you know, she was 16 at the time. So they, she couldn't hold a drink. And so instead he put her in like a white, you know, crop top and he put her underneath a waterfall so that she was, you know, soaking wet dancing 16 years old. I see. And, you know, over sexualizing her. She brought it up and the crowd just kind of laughed and she was like, Oh, okay. So different times for sure. Yeah. So, much different times. Yeah, um, and I mean it's a different situation, but it's like 
you know, she's tried to speak out against Michael Bay and look what happened. You know, she got, I mean, she didn't get a lot of roles after that, to be honest. It wasn't until she, you know, apologized and, you know, she was in Transformers five, four. I don't, I don't know. I stopped I watching. Those. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's, it really kind of sucks whenever you see, uh, actors or actresses that come out against a director, especially you kind of don't hear from them for a while because, yeah. you know, and you just, you're kind of expected just to deal with it. Yeah. That is tough water to tread. Um, I don't know what the answer is because certainly this Ray Fisher thing is very intriguing, but it's not the first time I've heard something like this from an actor who said, yeah, I've got problems with a director. We've talked about many examples. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in seeing again, I'm all about escalation and like what, what happens to get people more invigorated and what happens to the point where people's jobs are on the line who are perpetrating these actions because right now the bar has been set at Harvey Weinstein. So you have to be recorded mm -hmm. uh, on camera and on secret uh, video recording and audio recording saying all the awful things that people are accusing you of saying. That's not going to happen here because there may no. not have been just terribly awful things that were said from Joss Whedon. There may have been like subliminally awful things, but it's mm -hmm. not like blatant. Like maybe there were. Who knows? I don't think we'll ever know what exactly happened. Yeah. I think that they're going to try to protect him as I think the, I think the movie, the production company is going to protect, protect him as much as they can. And I, it's, if anything does come out, it would have to come from Ben Affleck or Jason Momoa or Gal Gadot to say anything. And Ezra Miller, you're talking about a big name basically. Yeah. Or Okay. I mean, Jason Momoa has already come out in, in support of him, but you know, Gal Gadot and Ben Affleck and Ezra Miller hasn't said anything right. just yet. And mm -hmm. so you almost wonder, um, you know, are they just somebody that's behind the scenes? And cause I mean, they all have movies coming up. So right. in Henry Cavill, like they're not going to speak out in this time. And especially Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller has his own movie coming out with Flashpoint. With, yeah. And Wonder Woman 1985 mm -hmm. is coming out. So there's a 84. lot at stake. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why did I say 85? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, there's a lot on line for these folks and not their reputation, but their future projects, their stream of right. income, all of that. So they got to tread carefully, but again, accountability over entertainment. Yeah, well, and and like Zack Snyder said, is that he um, pictured a trilogy, you know, flow of Justice League. And so that kind of puts all of them in jeopardy if they speak out against Joss Whedon. So, and I mean, it's going to look bad, honestly, too, if they say something and, you know, people that worked with him in Marvel didn't right like chris evans chris hemsworth scarlett johansson um well you can't name mark a, ruffalo yeah, you won't be able to name a black actor in the first two marvel movies yeah that's there weren't true any. there were not it, any it took 15 years for black panther to come along in uh oh, civil war r.i.p yeah chadwick boseman still so sad i guess falcon i guess war machine was around before him yeah, yeah, Don Cheadle was around in the Iron Man days. And he was well, in Avengers as well. But well, he was a And so was um Falcon. Falcon. Not was he? until oh, Winter Soldier was Falcon he? introduced. That's true. That's right, because we still have Bucky. Yep. In the first one. Yep. God, I need to revisit yep. all of those movies. Well, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I only like to go as far back as Winter Soldier. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I just it's it's I don't think we're ever gonna find out what happened, to be honest. But mm, I like to know, I like to find things out, Maggie. So even if it's just on this small fish, small pond show, we're going to figure things out in a future episode as this story continues to unravel, because certainly it's not uh, near being done. I think the coming no. weeks, the coming weeks will be pretty telling in which direction there goes. I know for myself, I'll be paying more attention than I was paying attention to it over the summer. Yeah, I much like coronavirus, I had to wait for you to say, hey, you should be paying attention to this. <laughs> well, I just, I don't know, because 
I mean, to be honest, um, you know, I started this channel to be a review channel and now, you know, movies are coming out. So I have to go in a completely different direction. And I'm just noticing things now about the industry that you have more time on again. Your hands. Yeah, I have more time and I can like research because I like to research about this kind of stuff. And that's why I didn't necessarily want to talk about stuff that's hearsay because I don't know. I, I Again, I can't find anybody that's saying this stuff, but I feel like it still needs to be said because maybe if we're saying it and it actually gets confirmed, you know, like I say, hey, I said that yeah. back October, yeah. October 13th. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> but Timestamp it, yeah, for sure, yeah, because so, this is one of the situations where the writing's on the wall, but you're dealing with such a big entity that it needs to go through all of these logistics yellow tape i think is the terminology that they use mm -hmm. in the world of politics or red tape one of those colors whatever the hell but it needs to go through all of these loopholes and all this jurisdiction all these channels, yeah, all and, these channels to well and the nda how long does the nda exactly, last exactly just to get a simple like yeah this guy was mistreated mm -hmm. by a guy who felt entitled who has a long history i mean yeah it's and, kind of the way that we've i seen. mean and i can't imagine that anybody that worked on Avengers would still be under any type of NDA. Oh yeah. No, for, so, point. I mean, if anything, it would almost look better for somebody like one of the actors that came out against, uh, and that's Disney too. That worked. I know. Well, so that's another thing you really don't want to, especially somebody, Disney. right. Cause once Disney gets involved, it's hush hush from there. Right. So, yeah, we don't know all the stories of how the kids at 12 years old get groomed to be Disney Channel TV stars, and then all of a sudden they're mm. big, huge, popular uh, faces that live with you through adulthood. Yes, it's that whole thing is just another that's a crazy mm -hmm. thing. Well, I mean, we know how Epstein Island works. Oh, all right. That's a whole other podcast. All right. That's a whole yeah. other thing, man. <laughs> Got to tickle the appetite of a future <laughs> podcast. Oh, uh, it's. I don't know. There's there's a lot of moving parts here. And yeah. I mean, if you want to follow along with it, just go follow Ray Fisher on Twitter. Again, it's Ray. It's at Ray, the number eight Fisher on Twitter. Um, I don't have an Instagram anymore, so I don't know if he has. I, you know, he must have an Instagram because Jason Momoa tagged him in it whenever I did have an Instagram. Um, But yeah, it, it's 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 going to keep playing out in front of our eyes. And I I mean, I talked about doing this podcast like two weeks ago, but I got, you know, I was, I was worried that I got Corona. Uh, so I, you know, self quarantined for a little bit and then went and got a test. And as soon as I found out I was negative, I was like, okay, we're, we're, what a noble, we're going to do this. What a righteous and noble thing. <laughs> so, but yeah, I don't want to film and might have Corona. Accountability you know, over entertainment. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There we go. And so, I mean, I've been talking about doing this for a while, and even whenever I first started talking about it, there's been more tweets at it. New news, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely, so, just adding to it. I mean, I'm just wait. I'm wondering what the next thing is going to be whenever Ray maybe says, hey, uh, we made great strides, and, you know, they found that Joss Whedon was in fault of, you know, gross and negligent behavior. Um, then what? What is the next big news that they're yeah. going to announce? Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in, like, the end result because i asked you an hour and a half ago it feels like uh what is his goal here what what is his end goal is it just to speak out and speak on the atrocities or not atrocities that's a hard word uh the mishandling of the way he's treating Cassandra. all that because he's done that well what is he trying to get out of it does he want <laughs> joss whedon to be harvey weinstein and basically removed from having a future in hollywood and uh be put to shame because if he's done some bad enough stuff okay that's cool um or are you trying to do it so that other people can speak up against other people that wronged them because that's noble as well i think i think it's the i think he's trying to bring attention to um how people behave that are supposed to be in almost like a managerial position um and how they need to act around the people around them and um, the analogy I used was, um, earlier we were off mic and, um, what we were talking about was, you know, you have, um, you know, a manager of, you know, an office and, you know, the, the person that picks up people's mail and delivers mail, you know, there's somebody that just goes all the way through the office and the 
boss for whatever reason just verbally abuses him says you know you give me my mail wrong or this didn't get sent out on time just completely verbally abuses them and shouts at them and you know that you know mail person has every right to go to hr and say hey i feel like i'm being mistreated and hr is supposed to look into it well what ray fisher is saying is that instead of hr handling it and looking into it they basically gave joss whedon a raise okay a raise and or a new position in a different company um with no fault and so he would like that sort of behavior corrected yeah i don't forward. i mean he hasn't said I want to end Joss Whedon's career gotcha. or he shouldn't be in the movie industry. I think that he's just wanting to say, Hey, the way you treat people is not very good and that needs to be corrected. So that way people don't feel like this. And I feel like it's going to open the door for other people to speak out maybe, or feel safe to speak out against, you know, higher people like we saw with Ellen DeGeneres and the Ellen DeGeneres show. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a huge deal that people were speaking out against Ellen and their experience with her. It was huge. And I think, and again, it's a war media production. So I think it's going to start trickling over and I think it's going to start going into um, maybe other uh, directors. People will start coming out with other directors, but I don't think that it's going to be big name actors and actresses that are speaking out. I think it's going to be people that feel like, you know, if I'm not going to work in Hollywood anymore, I'm not going to work in Hollywood. Just like John Boyega did whenever he was marching for George Floyd. You know, yes. if this hurts my movie career, it hurts my movie career. This is more important. So it's, and you know, he started speaking out against Star Wars. Now that he's not having to do Star Wars anymore, he was like, it was, um, I forget the term that he used, but basically you, you know. A Disney machine? Yeah. You basically, you put a black character in Star Wars and in the first first movie made him seem like he was going to be a major character a bait and switch it was a bait and switch and second and third movie comes out and he's a side character like there's no more character development after that unless it involves ray and he's absolutely right mm -hmm. and how much of that is climate based and the whole me too movement and all that mm -hmm. and women's empowerment and all that disney played right into that and said oh uh in the 2016 2017 years 2018 as well if you count uh, uh rise of the skywalker or that was 2019 so in the yeah, oh, the, yeah, in yeah. the last four years of the decade last Jedi or something. yeah we shifted a little bit from race being the main topic that people wanted to get right to women in empowerment and so disney being mm -hmm. disney is gonna latch on to whatever the crowd is latching on to because they know that if they put a female protagonist who, this is why Wonder Woman came out. This is why Black Widow got announced the same. These are money-making machines mm -hmm. that, yes, from the fans' perspective, it's great to see all of these female roles that were deserved 20 years ago in some cases. Right. I wonder, it's shocking to me that we got a crappy like 1970s TV show for Wonder Woman and we haven't had a live-action rendition since then, but we've got... Mm -hmm. Tons of Batman stuff, tons of Superman stuff. Right. It took until 2014, 2015 for that Wonder Woman uh, premiere. Sorry mm -hmm. if I'm getting some of these dates mixed up. There's so many superhero movies. It's impossible to right. keep it's track hard. of each year that they came out. Well, it, it's it's hard to believe that Marvel went 10 years without having a female solo movie. Right. And like, then it's Captain Marvel. <laughs> right. It's Captain Marvel. <laughs> Which is kind of... It's, I mean, yeah, I get it. But it was a dud. Um, it was all right. But it was a dud. I mean, um, people were asking for a Black Widow movie before we got Captain Marvel. Yes, for sure. And you wait until you kill the character off in Endgame to give her a movie. Mm -hmm. What the hell? The way these <sighs> studios work, Maggie, is they do capitalize on whatever the they capitalize temperature on and... of, of the real world is. And they tap into it. And that's why I'm so interested in seeing uh, the future of movies here. And I can't wait to hear you and Heather's talk on it. Because yeah. because everything that's gone on while there's been no movies, it's all data for these companies. And so some of the topics that were going to be discussed in these movies that are being delayed by two years and a year in some cases and two in some, I have a weird feeling that the themes and the the like the, the flow of the movie and the feel, it's going to be outdated and we're going to be 
over the female, not that we should be, but we're going to be over the female like empowerment sort of movement that right. we've been on. And we're going to be more about something like this accountability over entertainment. Mm -hmm. How does that, that doesn't fit the Hollywood model period because right. Hollywood's model is entertainment over accountability. Up Absolutely. To this point. And that's what, exactly. And that's why it brings it back to Weinstein who, I mean, people knew for 20 plus years that he was doing this. Yeah. And you saw like whatever was coming out about everything with Weinstein is that if you spoke out against him, you didn't work anymore. Right. Period. Because he was making uh, Warner Brothers or whoever, the Weinstein was, company. Yeah. Um, um, Merrimax. Yeah. There you go. He's making them billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you speak out against someone who's making you billions of dollars, you are going to have a lot of enemies very quickly. And. What it seems like now that we talk about it a little bit more is that Ray Fisher is working his way up the ladder and he's trying to uh, bring down a much bigger animal um, than just Joss Whedon. He's trying to bring down a power structure within Hollywood that is much like what we saw with Harvey Weinstein, just a different, a different lane, different, um, yeah, different different topic lane. and stuff like that. And yeah, maybe that's where we're at here. It'll be very interesting to see how it's reacted to by the studios They've got nothing better to do. Yeah, it's yeah. We're not saying that you know what Ray Fisher is bringing to light is on the same level as the Me Too move, uh, movement, but it is definitely something that is just scratching the surface of I think everything that's going on in Hollywood. Because whenever you go into Hollywood, it's you know, oh, you want to be an actress, you have to put up with this shit. It's you, been like that since the '30s, right? It's been it's forever it's like you mm -hmm. have to have a thick skin to be in hollywood not just because people tell you no but because people shout at you they'll do whatever and you gotta listen to it and you gotta suck it up and you gotta deal with it yeah and i think that he's just he's trying to change that structure to be like hey you can't do that this is just like any other workplace where you know if we have a problem we should be able to go to hr and hr opens up an investigation and it's not leading into hey we're moving you to another position and it's you know but you still get no sort of um backlash or anything for the shit that you've done right so i don't know we'll see how it plays out we'll see how it plays out talk but... about a fun rabbit hole to go down. <sighs> oh man yeah but yeah if y'all want to look at it i'll have again i'll have stuff in the uh description bar of different um articles that talk about everything that's going on with ray fisher um i'll have the full interview with Zack snyder whenever he was talking about um his snyder cut from comic con this year um, I'll have Ray Fisher's interview with that con that he did where he goes into a little bit more about the stuff that's going on with Joss Whedon and WB, um, and WB Pictures and Warner Media. Um, there's going to be other articles about people who have spoken out about Joss Whedon or the history of Joss Whedon and um, people that have come out and supported Ray Fisher. So again, kind of articles that match up and just go into more detail. So we we hit a lot of stuff. We hit everything that I wanted to talk about. But if you want to dive deeper, then um, those articles are really helpful. Uh, for sure. So, um, but yeah, so if you, if you hung around this long, you know, thanks, thanks for hanging out with us. And you're well informed. That's uh, what, that's what you are. If you yeah. hung around this long. Yeah. Yeah. You're well informed about a little piece of, uh, little piece of what's going on in Hollywood right now. And that applies to much more than just Hollywood. Right. So, uh, anything else you want to add before we, we bounce out? If your boss is a jerk, call him out. There we go. Call him out. Call him out. Do it. You know, we'll, we'll be careful during COVID times, but you know, still yeah. go up the ladder, go up the, talk to your HR person. Don't, don't take shit from nobody at your job. Right. So, <laughs> anyways, thanks for hanging out. Uh, Sasha, thanks again for coming on the podcast and talking about this. You bet. And, uh, and yeah, so uh, meandering and the film room, check it out on Spotify, Apple podcasts, um, Alexa. anchor, Alexa, Yep. Alexa play meandering by Morgan and Sasha. So Miguel has also been on um, meandering and I've also been on meandering too. I was you there have, a couple weeks recently. ago. Yep. Yeah. So uh, the newest, well, can we talk about your newest episode or what you're no. going to be doing? No, no not at all. all right. Top secret. Top secret. All right. Y'all. So go check out meandering. Um, it's great. It's awesome. That will also keep you informed on just everything going on. Um, outside of movie related stuff. Yeah, so. that's what that's what that's why you're part of this yeah. network. You're the you're the movie and entertainment news, Maggie. Yeah, I, I'll take it. I'll be entertainment news. So I'll keep up with everything going on right now. I don't have any movies to watch. Well, that's a lie. I'm going back on watching classic movies, which uh, Heather will be back on the podcast. Speaking of classic movies, we're uh, watching classic movies like crazy and we're going to talk about them because 
uh, they're great. A lot of them have hold up, like not hold up. A lot of them have held up well. So we'll be talking about that in a future podcast. But uh, Heather is coming over next week to talk about the uh, future of movie theaters and what direction we think they're going to take. Miguel another may. Another rabbit hole. Yeah, that's another rabbit hole for sure. Miguel will be uh, possibly in that episode as well. But Heather will definitely be. So stay on the lookout for that. If more stuff happens with Ray Fisher, we'll definitely give back. you. Yeah, call you back. We'll definitely talk about it. Um, what we went over is five months worth of stuff. Um, but if we take it back from the beginning, it's like three years worth of stuff. So uh, we covered it in like a two hour podcast. <laughs> Good. <laughs> But yeah, but thanks for hanging out with us. Um, please like and subscribe if uh, you enjoyed the video. If you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure you follow along so that way you keep up with everything. Um, leave us a comment about how we're doing. And if you've heard any about the Ray Fisher stuff, you know, feel free to add comments. If you have any other information, feel free to share it. I've I've researched the best I can, but again, I could have missed something. Something else a podcast would have said or an article I may have missed for sure. Uh, so if you have anything to add, you know, make sure to leave it down below, but thanks for hanging out with us and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>